Gang members were sentenced today for killing a teenager on a high school campus in the valley. I lose my son, Junior. I don't want to see nobody go through that. I adjudicate you guilty of the premeditated first degree murder of Tristan Bailey. I sentence you to life in prison. The criminal underworld has always fascinated people, and nothing quite captures the public imagination like the downfall of a notorious gang member. From the Trinitarios to the 28S, George Gewell Thomas, we've seen it all. But what happens when these hardened criminals are finally caught and sentenced to life in prison? In this video, we take a look at the top 10 most hunted gang members and their reactions to receiving the ultimate punishment. Get ready for some shocking revelations and unexpected emotions. Number one, the Trinitarios. The assassination of Lissandro Guzman Feliz, also known as Junior, shocked the nation and brought attention to the ruthless violence of street gangs. On June 20th, 2018, the 15-year-old boy was brutally attacked and assassinated by members of the Trinitarios gang in the Bronx, New York. The Trinitarios is a Dominican-American street gang that was founded in the late 1980s in New York City. The gang's name is derived from the Spanish word Trinity, which refers to the three dots that make up the gang symbol. The Trinitarios have a presence in several states across the U.S., as well as in the Dominican Republic. According to reports, the Trinitarios mistook Guzman Feliz for a member of a rival gang and attacked him with machetes and knives outside a bodega. The attack was captured on surveillance cameras and showed a group of men dragging Guzman Feliz out of the store and attacking him on the street. Despite the victim's attempts to seek refuge in the store, the gang members dragged him outside and continued to assault him. Following the brutal assassination, eight members of the Trinitarios were arrested and charged with first-degree gang assault and other related charges. The suspects were identified as Kevin Alvarez, Elvin Garcia, Antonio Rodriguez Hernandez Santiago, Jonaiki Martinez Estrella, Jose Muniz, Jose Tavares, Manuel Rivera, and Daniel Fernandez. In court, the defendants tried to shift the blame to one another, but the evidence was overwhelming. In June 2019, five of the defendants, Martinez Estrella, Muniz, Tavares, Rivera, and Fernandez, were found guilty of first degree, while the other three were convicted of lesser charges. The five defendants were sentenced to life in prison without parole, while the other three received sentences ranging from 23 years to life. The sentencing of the Trinitarios members brought some sense of justice to the family of Lissandro Guzman Feliz, who was described as a bright and aspiring young man. In a statement, the victim's mother, Leandra Feliz, said that the defendants took away my son's dreams. He wanted to be a detective, and he wanted to help others. She added, My heart is destroyed, but I will not let his name die. I will make sure that Junior's death will not be in vain. The Trinitarios gang members showed little remorse for their actions, and some even smiled and laughed during the trial. However, their conviction and sentencing sent a strong message that such senseless acts of violence will not be tolerated in our society. Number 2. Montana Baronet Montana Baronet, a member of the vicious West Baltimore narcotics gang known as Train to Go, has been sentenced to two life prison sentences for taking the lives of six people. According to the news, Baronet's social media activity revealed his violent tendencies, as he once wrote, A few haters, I will take all of your life if I could. Baltimore police once called him the city's number one trigger man. Baronet's involvement in the gang's criminal activities dates back to when he was just 13 years old. He was involved in illegal substance trafficking and violence, and by the time he was 21, he had already been attacked twice. Despite this, Baronet continued to engage in criminal activity, eventually becoming a key member of the Trained to Go gang. His crimes included several brutal assassinations, including the assassination of Antonio Addison on the front steps of his grandmother's home. The mother of one victim spoke at Baronet's sentencing, saying, Montana Baronet is the devil's child. Nobody can be that evil. To lose your son is the worst pain you can ever feel. During the trial, there were reports of witness intimidation, and several U.S. Marshals were assaulted while bringing co-defendants to court. Despite this, the jury found Baronet guilty of six counts of assassinations and multiple other charges related to racketeering. Baronet's lawyer claimed that his client had a difficult life, 
dealing since the age of 13 and was a victim of circumstance. However, the judge was not swayed, stating that Baronet's actions were a result of his own choices and that he was a danger to society. Baronet's reaction to the sentencing was a straight face, but many relatives of the victims chose not to speak out of fear for their own safety. The new police commissioner who attended the sentencing emphasized the importance of seeing the outcome firsthand, stating that it was necessary to understand what was at stake and how to make sure the police department performs at a high level and partners with other agencies. The sentencing of Montana Baronet sends a strong message that violent crime will not be tolerated in Baltimore and that those who engage in such activities will be held accountable for their actions. Number 3. Aiden Fucci Aiden Fucci was just 14 years old when he committed one of the most heinous crimes in recent Florida history. On May 9, 2021, he took the life of his 13-year-old classmate Tristan Bailey and left her body in a wooded area near their home in St. John's County. The shocking crime sent shockwaves through the local community and beyond, leaving many wondering how such a young boy could have committed such a brutal act. Aiden Fucci had a troubled background, with reports indicating that he had struggled with mental health issues and had a history of violent outbursts. He had also been involved in substance and alcohol abuse and had been suspended from school on several occasions. Despite these warning signs, his parents had reportedly failed to get him the help he needed, and he was left to his own devices. In June 2021, Aiden Fucci was arrested and charged with the assassination of Tristan Bailey. Despite his age, he was tried as an adult and faced the possibility of life in prison without the possibility of parole. The evidence against him was overwhelming, with prosecutors presenting DNA and other forensic evidence that linked him to the crime scene. On October 8, 2021, Aiden Fucci was found guilty of first degree by a jury of his peers. The verdict came after just two hours of deliberation, and the judge wasted no time in handing down his sentence. Aiden Fucci was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, meaning that he will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Fucci was tried as an adult after the judge deemed that, despite being only 14 years old, he understood the gravity of his actions. The judge noted that Fucci had intentionally taken the life of his classmate, Tristan Bailey, just to experience what it felt like to take life, despite knowing the severe consequences of his actions. This decision to try him as an adult has been a subject of debate, with some arguing that Fucci's age and mental state should have been taken into account. Aiden Fucci himself showed little emotion during the sentencing hearing, but reports indicate that he was visibly shaken by the verdict. His defense team has vowed to appeal the decision, arguing that he was too young to fully understand the gravity of his actions. Number 4. George Guild Thomas George Guild Thomas, a notorious gangster from South Africa, was sentenced to seven life terms in prison on June 3, 2015. Born in 1963, Thomas grew up in Cape Town's notorious Cape Flats, a hotbed of gang activity and violence. He was a member of the 28S gang, which was known for its brutal tactics and control of the narcotics trade in the area. Thomas's criminal career began in his teens when he was initiated into the 28S gang. Over the years, he rose through the ranks and became one of the gang's most feared members. He was involved in numerous violent crimes, including assassinations, illegal substance trafficking, and extortion. In 2006, he was arrested and charged with the assassination of seven people, including a six-month-old baby, and is now paying the price for his crimes. Thomas faced over 50 charges and was sentenced to life imprisonment for each one. He orchestrated four assassinations while behind bars, proving that he was still a force to be reckoned with. Thomas and six of his gang members were given life sentences, while the rest received between 12 and 25 years. This trial was a crucial part of the state's fight against organized crime and gang activity. The trial, which began in 2010, shed light on crimes committed by gangs between 1999 and 2010. Witnesses testified some were flanked by bodyguards due to gang threats, and half of those linked to the case were assassinated. Thomas was unrepentant throughout the trial, making more than 30,000 calls from jail, including orders to take the lives of several people, even witnesses. 
Despite overwhelming evidence and witness testimonies, Thomas bore a seemingly unbreakable smile on his face during the entire trial process. He was found guilty of first degree, and he is now paying the price for his actions. Thomas's sentencing was seen as a victory for the South African justice system, which has been criticized for being too lenient on violent criminals. It was also seen as a message to other gang members that their reign of terror would not be tolerated. Number 5. Abel Gallegos Abel Gallegos, a gang member, has been sentenced to life in prison plus 163 years for his role in the retaliation assassination of Isabella Thalas Duran. Gallegos, along with two other individuals, René Francisco Rosales and Alonso Quintana, were found guilty on multiple counts for their involvement in the heinous crime. Duran had identified Quintana in a lineup for an attempted assassination investigation, making her a target of Gallegos and his associates. On November 5, 2018, Duran was lured, kidnapped, attacked ten times, and set on fire by the trio. Gallegos had approached Duran on social media and arranged to meet with her, along with Rosales and others at a house in Denver. Duran, Gallegos, and Rosales left the house together, and Rosales went home, leaving Gallegos alone with Duran. Gallegos took Duran to a parking lot where they met Quintana. Quintana and Gallegos then assaulted Duran and imprisoned her in the backseat of a vehicle. They drove her to a secluded spot in Golden, where Quintana and Gallegos attacked her ten times. The sentencing judge, Philip McNulty, expressed disgust at the disregard for human life and the casual nature of the crime. He noted that the crime was premeditated and planned, with the perpetrators showing no remorse for their actions. Judge McNulty added that Gallegos was the ringleader of the group and that his actions were heinous and unforgivable. During the trial, Gallegos maintained his innocence, claiming that he was not involved in the death. However, the evidence presented in court proved otherwise, and he was found guilty on multiple counts. Following his sentencing, Gallegos showed no emotion and remained silent. The punishment handed down by the court reflects the severity of the crime committed by Gallegos and his associates. Life imprisonment plus an additional 163 years will ensure that they will not be able to commit similar crimes in the future. Number 6. Gangster Disciple Street Gang in one of the most heinous crimes in recent Atlanta history, a group of gang members has been sentenced to life in prison for the brutal assassination of Christopher Dean. The group, consisting of members of the Gangster Disciples Street Gang, attacked Dean with baseball bats multiple times in front of a MARTA station on November 16, 2016. The gang members were identified as members of the Gangster Disciples Street Gang and had a history of violence and criminal activity. The group was known to operate in the West End neighborhood and had been involved in numerous crimes, including narcotics trafficking and assassination. Christopher Dean, a father of two, was brutally assassinated in Atlanta in what has been described as one of the most horrific attacks in recent history in Fulton County. Dean was invited to the home of Xavier and Orlando Gibson by Christopher Lockett, whom he thought he was meeting for a deal. However, Lockett had discovered that Dean had been a police witness in California, and he and other members of the Gangster Disciples decided to make an example out of him. Dean was beaten with a 2x4 and a crowbar, and his body was put in the trunk of a car and left at a MARTA station in Atlanta. The evidence of the crime was left untouched for 30 days before it was discovered. The brutality of the attack caused shock and horror in the community. In 2018, a jury convicted Lockett, Gibson, Cortez Clark, Rooks, and Green for their participation in the slaying, felony slang participation in criminal street gang activity, and other related felonies. The Fulton County District Attorney called it the most horrific attack in recent history in Fulton County. Lockett was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Clark was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences plus five years. Green was sentenced to life in prison plus three years, and Brooks and Gibson were sentenced to life in prison. The judge, Gail S. Tuzan, noted the egregious nature of the injuries and the fact that the attack was the result of criminal street gang activity. She described the attack as a sobering experience, noting that it is difficult for parents to see their offspring leave the world before they do. The gang members showed no remorse for their actions during the trial, and their reaction to the sentencing was muted. Number 7. Victor Rodos 
Victor Rodos was an alleged member of the notorious MS-13 gang who was found guilty of his role in the brutal death of a 17-year-old teenager named Raymond Wood in Lynchburg, Virginia. The assassination was a result of a fake narcotics deal set up by Rodos through a series of text messages. Wood was abducted by Rodos and five other co-defendants who allegedly strangled him unconscious in the backseat of a car before attacking him with a 17-inch knife. Rodos was convicted of first-degree abduction and gang participation. The MS-13 gang, also known as Mara Salvatrucha, is one of the most violent and dangerous gangs in the world. The gang originated in Los Angeles in the 1980s and has since spread across the United States, Central America, and Europe. The gang is known for its brutal tactics, including assassination, assaults, and human trafficking. MS-13 is also known for its use of tattoos, which members use to mark their affiliation with the gang. During the trial, a jury sentenced Rodos to 55 years in jail. The jury recommended that Rodos spend 35 years behind bars for desalination, 10 years for abduction, and 10 years for gang participation. The medical examiner testified that Wood died from sharp force injuries to his neck, torso, and hand. During Rodos' trial, the defense argued that Rodos got caught up with the wrong person, alleged MS-13 gang member Jose Correas Ventura. However, the evidence presented in court revealed that Wood and Rodos knew each other, and there were a series of text messages from Rodos setting up the fake deal that lured Wood to the scene where he was assassinated. Rodos was reactionless while his sentence was being announced, but his conviction was seen as a victory in the fight against MS-13. The gang has been responsible for a wave of violence across the United States, with a particular focus on the East Coast. Number 8. The Carpio Brothers The Carpio Brothers, Anthony and Michael, were members of a street gang and were sentenced for their involvement in the fatal stabbing of 18-year-old Kevin Orellana on the Cleveland High School campus in Reseda, California in 2013. Anthony Carpio, who was 18 at the time of the crime, was sentenced to 16 years to life, while Michael Stephen Carpio, who was 20, received a sentence of 15 years to life. According to Los Angeles County Deputy District Attorney Scott Marcus, both brothers were found guilty on October 31, 2016, of one count of second degree against Orellana, who was not a gang member. Michelle Pineda, a third co-defendant, was sentenced to two years in county jail after pleading no contest to one felony count of accessory after the fact that he had knowledge of a crime. The Carpio brothers were known to have gang ties, and their involvement in the crime was suspected to be gang-related. On September 18, 2013, they got into a verbal altercation with Orellana and his friends on the high school campus. The argument escalated into a physical altercation during which Anthony attacked Orellana multiple times with a knife. Michael also participated in the attack by holding back Orellana's friends. The prosecution argued that the Carpio brothers acted with premeditation and malice and that they targeted Orellana simply because he was not a gang member. During the trial, evidence was presented that the brothers had made threats against Orellana in the past and that they had previously engaged in violent behavior. At the sentencing hearing, the brothers expressed remorse for their actions and apologized to Orellana's family. However, the judge noted that their actions had caused immense pain and suffering to Orellana's loved ones and the community as a whole. The case of the Carpio brothers highlights the dangers of gang activity and the devastating consequences that can result from gang-related violence. Number 9. Roland 30's Crips Street Gang. Three Roanoke men who were members of the Roland 30's Crips Street Gang were sentenced for their involvement in two slayings in the city. Sean Denzel Grant, also known as Harlan Dank, 31, pled guilty to one count of racketeering conspiracy and one count of conspiracy to commit a slaying. He was sentenced to 37 years in prison. The convictions were part of an investigation into the Roland 30s Crip Street Gang, which was responsible for a number of violent crimes in the Roanoke area. The gang was also linked to narcotics trafficking, extortion, and other criminal activities. Trayvon Ray Crone, 21, who was the gang leader, 
pled guilty to federal racketeering conspiracy, slaying, conspiracy to commit a slaying, possession of a firearm and furtherance of a crime of violence, interference with commerce by robbery, and discharging a firearm in furtherance of a crime of violence. He was sentenced to over 40 years in federal prison. Casey DeMonte Mack, another member of the gang, pled guilty to racketeering conspiracy, slaying, conspiracy to commit a slaying, possession of a firearm in furtherance of a crime of violence, and interference with commerce by robbery. He was sentenced to 36 years in prison. During a press conference, Daryl Lee, the father of one of the victims, spoke about what he thinks needs to be done to combat gang violence in Roanoke. He emphasized the need to teach kids right from wrong at home, saying, We can put all the money we want to, but until we get to the core problem of teaching kids what is right and wrong at home, this will continue to be a problem. The U.S. Attorney's Office also commented on the case, with U.S. Attorney Christopher Kavanaugh saying, Gun violence on our streets is not acceptable in a civilized society period, and we think that's exactly what these substantial federal sentences do. He added that the office will continue to investigate gang activity and look for ways to make such crimes federal offenses. While investigators believe there are no longer any Roland 30s Crips members in Roanoke, the U.S. Attorney's Office said they are still investigating other gangs in the area. A fourth member of the gang who previously pled guilty to related charges is expected to be sentenced soon. Overall, the sentences handed down to the three Roland 30s Crips members demonstrate the seriousness with which the court and law enforcement take gang-related crimes. The hope is that these sentences will serve as a deterrent to others and help reduce gang-related violence in the Roanoke area. Number 10. Lee Rios Lee Rios, a 25-year-old man, was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole by Judge Mark D. Mason in Hampton Superior Court on Friday, February 23, 2018. Rios was found guilty of the first degree for taking the life of 18-year-old Kenneth Lopez, a fellow member of the Latin Kings gang, in 2015. During the trial, Assistant District Attorney Max Bennett detailed the events leading up to the assassination, stating that Rios made a calculated decision to lure Lopez from his house, enlisting the help of other Latin Kings members. Bennett described the assassination as meticulously planned and aggressively pursued, and noted that Rios was excited to carry it out. After the assassination, Rios boasted about it to others. The jury found Rios guilty of first degree under the theories of deliberate premeditation and extreme atrocity and cruelty. He was also found guilty of eight gun charges. Rios was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, as mandated by law for a first degree conviction. In addition, he was sentenced to 14 to 15 years in state prison for the charge of improper storage of a large capacity firearm, which was found near the presence of a number of minor children. While some may suggest that ordering consecutive sentences after a life sentence is senseless, Judge Mason stated that there are situations in which it is appropriate. He said that leaving a large-capacity firearm in the presence of children was one such situation. At the sentencing hearing, family members of Lopez read an impact statement. The family wrote that the death of Kenneth was unexpected and had hit them hard, and that they were still in disbelief that he was no longer with them. Rios showed little reaction during the hearing. Defense lawyer Marianne Stamm argued in her closing statement that the prosecution's only evidence against Rios was the testimony of people seeking to get help on their own charges. She noted that Lopez and Rios were Latin Kings members, but had a falling out, suggesting the possibility of revenge from someone else in the gang. However, numerous prosecution witnesses testified that Rios told them he took the life of Lopez, and the jury ultimately found him guilty. The conspiracy theory presented by the defense was not deemed believable by the jurors. The sentence was mandated by law, and Rios showed little reaction during the sentencing hearing.